Well, this isn't something I normally see at my shop. It's a 76 Mercedes 230. Had it at this shop a couple months ago to do some small maintenance stuff. We replaced a turn signal stock and uh, adjusted points and just a couple little, little minor details. And I did mention to the owner that I would like to uh, have a crack at paint correction on this thing because it's pretty beat up. And being a dark car, I think it'll make a huge, huge difference on it and uh, they decided to go for it. So here it is. I also, I've got two, I did one of their cars yesterday and I'm doing two more of their cars in the next couple days. So I've got my hands full with paint correction. So I need to knock this out today. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. The owner already got it, gave it a little bit of a bath and uh, I'm just gonna start on clay bar and, and hit it. Oh, by the way, I'm Adam. Welcome to Antique Automotive Service. Just want to give you an idea of what we're up against here. It is pretty beat up. I don't think it's ever really been polished or, or babied the way we're going to. And this is clean. I mean, there's that kind of stuff. Sometimes it comes out, sometimes it doesn't. We'll just have to see what happens. A little bit of water spotting on this thing, but I think that's uh, superficial. So the whole car is this way. The goal for me is to make all of these scratches go away. Of course, there's gonna be a few that just are too deep to, to dig out. But looking at paint like this in the sun is a little bit different than looking at it in here. This really brings out all the garbage that's in the paint. There's a couple little spots like this. This paint's old, so it's not gonna be perfect, but definitely is gonna be huge difference on this thing. A lot of uh, oxidation around the edges over here on the front clip. I can take that out pretty easy. Pretty bad, but this is gonna be an awesome transformation. Let's get started. When I do clay barring, I'll just do one panel at a time, dry it, move to the next panel. Also, I don't grab the whole bar. I just grab a little bit of a, you know, a pinch so I can use two fingers and rub it on there like that. So that way that cold bar lasts 20 cars and you're not buying new clay bars all the time. And then whatever your spray detailer of choice is, just get it nice and uniformly wet. I kind of knock out about a, you know, half, half a panel at a time. And you can feel, this is a medium clay bar, which, you know, is a good middle of the road bar for most folks. And you'll be able to feel when you run the bar over the spots you haven't been on yet, you'll be able to feel grit. And when you come back, to the spots you've already hit, it's nice and smooth. That's how you know to move on. Sometimes you can hear it, like the grit sounds like sandpaper. And occasionally, you'll be able to see some additional scratches that you've put in the car. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's brown. I mean, this is a clean car and that is coming off. I don't know if this car sits outside or, I mean, obviously it has sat outside in the past, but just go over every panel just like this. And once you're done, wipe it off with your microfiber. Microfiber towels that I use are a, they call them, I think, I think they call them like a 600 plus or something like that, but they've got 600,000 strands per inch, per square inch. And they're very expensive, but they're absolutely, hands down, the best microfiber towel you can use on these things. When I do paint correction, I do nothing without these towels. You do want to flip and, and massage your clay every once in a while to get a new, a new edge. Looks like the engine's kind of cooking this 
detail her a little bit. I might have to add a little bit more. It doesn't have to be perfectly dry. It'll dry on its own. You're going to buff all this out anyway. Yuck. I'm going to get some other detailers that are going to yell at me because I didn't decon the car before I started clay barring. What a decon is, is an iron decontamination stage where you basically spray this random chemical onto the car and it drips. It's supposed to remove all the iron contamination from the paint before you start. Well, guess what we're doing? I think the decon is a little bit of a... Uh, and a step that doesn't need to be taken most of the time unless you can see some serious contamination but honestly it's you know it's good for wheels and tire or wheels and stuff that you're trying to get metal off of I don't know this seems to do the job just fine for me this had a little bit of a wind or rain shield sitting on top of the moonroof here so I am go anything I can remove I will just so I can get into these little crevices I've got to clean all this up before I do any clay bar on it but uh, also like on these on these GS's the rear spoiler comes off as well if it's got one and that's uh, really the only way you can get under the spoiler to do that so anything that you can take off little bolt on little doodads stuff like that that you don't have to work around and that you can get into and under these little spots is uh, really makes a difference in the detail on the job. Yeah, I'm doing the glass too. This car gets us a, a uh, graphene coating, so I'm gonna do the glass as well. I'm gonna make sure it's as clean as it can possibly be. And yes, clay bar and glass is a thing. So with paint correction, there's no actual painting going on. All you're doing is perfecting what's there as much as you possibly can. Uh, once in a while, I'll go over a car and see if, see if there's a little chip here and there that I can cover up or fill in with some touch-up paint or whatever, but generally there's no actual paint work being done on these cars. I get asked that question quite a bit. Because people think when you, <clears throat> when, you, when you say paint correction, they think, oh, you're going to make the paint perfect again. Well, that's kind of the idea, but I'm not painting the car. I'm only improving what is there or perfecting as, as close to perfect as I can what's on the car. I'm going to bring my microphone in real close to these uh, this clay bar and the, and the action that it's that it's doing and you'll I mentioned before that you'll feel basically sandpaper and you can hear it as well I don't know if you, not sure if you can hear that very well or not but it that's what it's it's what it sounds like when you run over a surface that hasn't been clay barred yet and then when you go back over it Virtual, virtually no noise. Maybe a little bit here and there that got missed or, or you hit a, a funky spot in the paint that like an old touch-up spot or a, something like that. But generally you'll be able to feel when you need to move to the next spot. And it usually doesn't take much scrubbing. Alright, enough about Clay barring. I'm going to get this done and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, now that we're done with our first 
step, which would be the clay bar, it's time to move on to your first cut of polishing. Uh, I always, I mean, if the car is, has any scratches in it, I always go to a coarse wool pad on my Rupus uh, Bigfoot six inch DA. And it's pretty much my go-to for everything now. I'll even polish out cars that I've wet sanded with this thing. Uh, this is, uh, I use a lot of Jack Spikes products and they seem to work really well for me. This is the perfect cut number one with a coarse pad. I also, if it gets really bad and I need to really dig, I'll go to that the 3M Perfectit or uh, number one compound and it seems to help quite a bit, but it gets a lot hazier if you use that really heavy cut compound. I better get my earplugs in because this machine is whiny. So just pick a uh, kind of a two by two area and work it back and forth and up and down and uh, see how it goes. Oh, I forget everything. I'm gonna put you in nice and close so you can see exactly what's going on with this paint. And I, this is the first time I'm touching this. So you and I are both gonna find out together what it's gonna, what it's gonna do. Just kinda blot my stuff on there and let her rip. Single stage paint. That is the first cut. Look a little better, huh? There's still a lot of crap in the paint, but there's, you know, there's just nothing you can do with some of these pock marks and stuff like that, but the general idea is to go from this to that. And we're just gonna work our way around the car just like that. And if you see any other little scratches or things like that, you can start digging a little bit more if you want, like that little scratch right there. I'm gonna see if I can kind of work on that a little bit, and then I'll move on to the next spot. Also, uh, on these single stage paint jobs, the color really comes off on this pad. What you want to do is pretty much every panel, clean that out and then run the DA, you know, clean it out with the water, then run the DA wide open and let the water kind of spray off of it. That way it dries it pretty quick, but that definitely needs to be taken care of much more often than a clear coated car. Okay, first pass, you can see that it's hazy. You can really see it there for, you know, that's, that's a section there that I did, and then there's a section that I did, and you can kind of see where I stopped and started. 
but usually I can get away with uh, jumping to a number three polish with a foam pad and we'll see if that is possible with this or not. We may have to do a number two pass, but for the most part, I've got all the scratches out there, stuff like that and that that are just, they're etched into the paints like uh, tree sap or whatever, bird poop. Uh, and a couple little scratches like that, you just, I can't get out. Being single stage paint, I have, uh, I have a few reservations on digging a lot because if I, you know, you'll be able to see it if I go through the paint. So uh, same thing with clear coat, but clear coat seems to be a little bit more resilient to it. So onward. Probably isn't completely necessary to show you how to clean this off, but I usually fold it in half and kind of roll it in my hands like that. Kind of helps agitate some of that stuff out of there and then just i like to use my hands just kind of scratch it out or you can use a brush they sell special cleaning brushes but honestly it's probably just as well to use what you got as long as it's clean don't use a brush you've been using to clean grandma's white walls with you're not gonna get it all out being a single stage paint. This is just kind of permanently stained at this point. Get all the water out you can. And we'll throw it back on the machine and run it to get the excess water out of it. Then it'll be ready to use again. Sometimes if you watch videos or see photos of people doing paint corrections, they'll have things masked off with tape, like all the trim and, and jams and stuff like that. Uh, usually is only a problem if the trim uh, gets damaged or will stain if you get buffing compound on it. So if you're scared of it, cover it up. This has a a little black center piece of trim on it that definitely is going to hold compound and it is a bear to get out sometimes it's impossible so that's why you see that on, on a lot of cars that are getting worked on like this that way you can kind of go to town on it and not have to worry about getting into that trim Speaking of trim, the trim that I really am worried about on this car is, is this stuff here. Like, you really don't want any wax or compound or anything on that. Same thing with this stuff here. It's just, it's going to soak up that stuff and get into these pores and it's just never going to come out. Sometimes you'll see that on, uh, oh, I don't know, all these plastic clad cars that, uh, that run around town now with people waxing them and they get their little waxing pad and just go to town on it. It turns white. You, it's just almost impossible to get that stuff out. But before I hit the doors, I want to do the top. So you work uh, kind of like kind of like you're washing the car. Work from the top down so that you're not dragging your jeans or whatever you got on all over the paint that you just polished.
Wow. Totally going to be a different car when it's done. This is super cool. Okay. Finally done with number one cut. I did find out that a good portion of this car has been repainted and it's basically the entire right side and the trunk lid and it was done in base clear. So it allowed me to kind of dig a little bit uh, more at my own comfort and I uh, was able to get a little bit more out, but not much. It's just things so scratched up. Um, I think I'm going to go around the car and just fill in a couple little black dealies just so your eyes not drawn to it. And then I'll go over it with the final uh, number three. I'm going to try number three. Hopefully number three takes care of all the uh, cloudiness. If not, then we'll revert back to number two. Okay, ready for next round. I'm going to jump to number three like I said I was going to. Hopefully we can circumvent number two. Oh, New towel. You need to have clean, clean everything. Your other one was contaminated with number one and a bunch of other crap. Fine uh, foam pad. And I use number three. Jack wax, Oof. about to explode. Same principle, slower speed and a larger area. I get my hearing protection on. I can't hear already, so I'm trying to save whatever's left. so bad. Okay, I think we're in good shape. I don't see any leftover uh, swirl marks or anything like that, so I'm going to proceed as planned with number three throughout the whole car. Real quickly, I want to show you what we're looking at as far as why we have to do another round of polishing. So you see this milky look to it. And it continues down the side of the car. It's but pretty dusty right now, but the goal is to eliminate the milky look. So that is finished polish. This is not. Of course, there's a few scratches left in it. I just can't get some out. But yeah, that's, uh, that's why I'm doing that last round of polishing and get all that out and make it look crystal clear. Then I can do my ceramic coat. When I get done with all this, I'm going to open up all the doors, hood, trunk, and clean all the jams out. And then I will uh, get the glass cleaned up. We'll be ready for some graphene. Quick walk around to this thing before I go any further. This is after two rounds. It is as good as it's going to get. Still kind of see a few things in the paint, but I'd say decades old Mercedes looks pretty darn good after a while. I've got a little bit of handwork to do here in these areas, front and back, 
and then I'm going to clean everything up and we'll be pretty close to uh, ceramic time. Look, my rainbows. That's what that ceramic looks like going on. And just buff it off. Well, there you have it, folks. A complete transformation from daily driver to show machine. I really love doing this, and it just is so satisfying. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure you hit the subscribe button and like the video. And if you already haven't, hit the little bell down in the corner that tells you when I have new videos up. And uh, yeah, cool. Hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.